Hey guys, Shock here from Shock Tech, and in today's video what we have is we have the official One UI 4.0 with Android 12 rolling out to the Samsung Galaxy S21 series. Now in my case, this is an unlocked US model. Some phones already got this update, some phones probably are going to get it in the next couple days. So let me show you what's happening. If I go into my settings, and if I go all the way down, and if I go into software update, and if I go to the last update, you are going to see it says right here, this is One UI Beta Program Operation Team, and they're sending out the official version. They're going to explain all that at the bottom here. Now, one thing I want you guys to be aware of is if you already had the One UI Beta installed on your phone, then this is going to be a very small file. So in my case, I had the beta running on this phone for the whole time. So when I got the update, finally, you can see the size is 314 megabytes only, and it's going to be a very quick update. But if you did not have the beta and you're receiving the update separately, it's going to be a much larger file, probably over two gigabytes. And it's going to take a little bit more time to update. But once you're done, you are going to have the One UI 4.0. So let's look over here about phone. I'm going to tap on software information and you can see 4.0 12 double taps a couple times. You get this little clock. If you bring it to 12, you get that animation, okay? So officially, it is here. I am going to put my SIM card back into this phone for the next couple weeks and see how stable it is. But so far, it feels really good. So it's super smooth. All the options are now working. Nothing is crashing. Now, here's a couple highlights what I really like uh, as far as the new features are concerned. Now, first and foremost, if you do have an S Pen, okay, the S Pen menu has now changed a little bit. So if I press the button, it brings up the Air Command menu that has a new look and feel. The one thing I like about this new look and feel is in the past, this was all dark, no matter if you had the dark mode or not. Now, if I enable the dark mode, let's go to the dark mode here. It actually reflects into the S Pen menu, making that dark as well. So that is absolutely fantastic. Now, the other thing that I'm going to be using a lot for sure, I actually used this uh, yesterday, uh, all night basically. So it's the new extra dim feature. Okay, so it's going to be somewhere here. And if you don't see it over here, tap on this button and tap on edit buttons. All right. And you should see the extra dim feature. Now, this feature is great, especially if you use your phone at night time as you're in bed and your lights are off. A lot of people do that and we know that. So normally what I do is I lower the brightness to minimum, but the funny thing is in pitch black, even the minimum brightness is too bright for the eyes. So when you tap on the extra dim, it gives you even more dimming at nighttime, uh, reducing the eye strain. So that's a great feature. It does work with every, uh, every level of brightness, but I think it's very useful uh, for pitch black nighttime. Also, if you go into settings and if you go into the device care under battery, we now have the battery protect feature. So the battery stops charging at 85% when it's plugged in and that is going to increase the lifespan of your battery. You can disable this if you want the old version. That's fine. Your phone is still going to last a long time. This one just makes it last extra long especially if you're going to be keeping the phone with you for a long time. And then here we have the processing speed. So when you click on this one, you now get two options, optimized, high, maximum. Okay. So you can make the phone go nuts, just keep it at high or just optimize it. So it's intelligently balances everything as necessary. Actually, I do like to keep mine at high just to get the best performance. It does use a little bit more battery and may cause heating. Again, not a big deal. That's normal. Okay. Your phone is not going to blow up. That's another feature. One more thing I like is when I go to my settings and if I go all the way uh, down over here to my battery and device care and tap on it, you'll notice that we have a new look. Uh, but what I really like is first and foremost, if you do go to memory, you're going to be seeing the virtual RAM option right here. So you are getting four gigabytes of additional virtual RAM, which is going to boost the performance of your phone if needed under heavy load. The phone is going to decide all that. It's automatically turned on. You don't have to worry about it. So that's that. That's a virtual RAM. So I have 12 
plus four, 16 gigabytes of hybrid RAM. I'm gonna go back over here, and what I really like is in device care, now we have the additional care options at the bottom that combines the software updates and diagnostics. So software updates, just the regular updates, it just makes sense it to be under device care. And then I have the diagnostics. So if I tap on diagnostics, it is gonna launch the Samsung members application from where what I can do is I can check the health of my phone across 25 categories. So if I tap on battery status, it says checking normal, working normally. So that's fantastic. I'm gonna go back. Let me just say no to this one. So you can see that the first one has been checked off. It's good to go. You can do it for all these guys sensors, flashlights, buttons, microphone, camera. Just make sure your phone is up to date. I just like the fact that it's now bundled under device care. So it's a centralized location to get everything done. So one of my favorite features is the new PIP option. So if I tap on this one, I'm playing a music, uh, a video or whatever. Look at this. The PIP is now so much more flexible and customizable. I can pinch to make it bigger, pinch to make it any size I want. Of course, I can put it anywhere that I want. So in the past, I was limited to the maximum size. Now I can go maximum, just watch the video and do whatever I want. I can hide it when I don't need it and just bring it back up. Very nice and bouncy, smooth and highly customizable. So PIP option is now great. Now, another feature that I do like that I'm, I think you're gonna like as well, if you do multitasking on your phone, split screen multitasking is this option. Advanced features, labs, and what you have is multi-window for all apps. If you enable this, now I can do this split screen basically with any application that you download, which is great. There's no more limitations. You can do split screen with every app, not just the ones that are compatible from the factory, but any app that you download. And of course, the animations are nice and smooth as you can see. Okay, so that's fantastic. Let's move on. And then if you're playing music in the background, you're gonna get this new uh, widget here in your notifications panel. You can expand this, control the music, and you can tap on media output. Let's say you're listening to music and you wanna switch to some other Bluetooth device in the house, boom, you just tap that button. You can pick any one of these guys, any Bluetooth device that is connected to your phone right from here. So that is also extremely useful. And the same thing is gonna appear in your control, um, I'm sorry, in your lock screen as well, as you can see, okay? So that's fantastic. Now we also have some privacy options here. So if I go to my settings, okay, again, if I go into my privacy panel right here, you're gonna see that we have two toggles here. These are very important, camera access and microphone access. A lot of applications on our phones access the camera and the microphone. Sometimes you don't even know it's happening. So boom, boom, it turns off complete access to any one of these guys. So right now you're off the grid, so nobody can access your camera, microphone, uh, as far as apps are concerned. Not sure about the government though, they probably still can see everything you're doing. So you can disable the camera and microphone access. Now what I, one thing I like is, if you're gonna be using something like this a lot, they do have these options in the quick toggle. So it's gonna be here somewhere, let me see. And if you, if you don't see it here, again, you go here, tap on edit buttons, look right there. So camera access, click on done, and I can just quickly toggle on and off right from there. So that's great. And under privacy, one thing I like, just out of curiosity, I like to look at these things. If I tap on permissions, uh, I can see all the apps that I've been accessing various components of my phone whenever. So for example, what applications have accessed my call logs in the last 24 or last seven days? I can click on it and look at that. It says the phone, Google, and the Buds Live have accessed my call logs and here's the times for it, okay? So this is a really nice and precise breakdown. Same with camera. So camera, was used these times with these options. So that's that. Now, talking about the camera, let me launch it real quick. You're gonna see that when you launch the camera on the top, there's a little green dot. Now that dot indicates that your camera is right now being used by an application. So it doesn't have to come up when you launch the camera. It can come up anytime. But when it does, you can pull it down, tap on it, it'll tell you 
the camera is being used by the camera application. So if Facebook is using your camera, it's gonna say Facebook is using the camera, but you are gonna see a green dot. That green dot is gonna be available both for the camera and the microphone. So just be aware of that as well. Another nice feature to see what's going on uh, with your phone. And of course, one of the biggest features is gonna be this guy. So when I pinch the screen, go to my wallpapers and style, you know, I got my regular wallpapers, but now I have the color palette. If I click on this one, I can, what, what it does is it's gonna extract all the information from the uh, wallpaper that is currently set, and then you can change the theme. So look at this, for example, that's dark blue. Okay, so when I go, when I pull this down, so now I pulled it down, it's dark blue, the toggles. But if I go back here and pick something like this, uh, look at the brightness slider is now brown, that's light blue, so I'm gonna tap on done. So that's been applied, I'm gonna pull this down, you can see brown and light blue toggle. So it, it makes it changes everywhere across your system and make sure you apply the palette, this color palette to your app icons as well. So they get themed, as you can see. All of the stock icons are also gonna change color, as you can see. So when I pull this down, anything that's stock, it's gonna look blue, okay? And it's gonna match this color right here. And if it is not a stock icon, it's not gonna change. And also, it is gonna reflect to the folders, okay? So look at, look at, look at the folders, they're now bluish, as you can see. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know for now, guys. Have a fantastic day, all right?